Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Robin Island, a World Heritage Site in Table Bay, Cape Town, has gone green with the installation of a 25 million rand solar energy lithium-ion battery storage microgrid. Mia Breitenbach has the details. For years, Robin Island has served key purposes, from being a leper colony to a political prison, to now being a World Heritage Site and a prime tourist destination. The island receives more than 300,000 visitors each year and uses almost 2 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year. The electricity in particular fulfills residential needs as more than 100 people live on the island. Other power users are the harbour and offices as well as the desalination plant which uses the majority of the energy. However, the installation of a new solar photovoltaic microgrid system is expected to make a significant change to the island's power supply. The microgrid will produce almost 1 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year. This supply is almost half of the island's yearly electricity requirement. According to technology provider ABB, South Africa and Southern Africa MD Leon Fulyun, the microgrid system is the ideal solution, not only for the environment, but also from a business perspective. Fuyun also emphasized the importance of microgrids in providing access to electricity. Over a billion people in Africa and India don't have any access to electricity. By putting in microgrids, you're basically creating the opportunity to give them um, power and energy at cost-effective prices and also in the shortest possible time. EPC contractor Solar Future Energy was appointed by the Department of Tourism to design and build the microgrid for Robin Island. Solar Future Energy design engineer Ian Berger explained during the site visit that the microgrid comprised three power production elements. These elements are the solar photovoltaic farm, the battery bank and the diesel generators. The solar photovoltaic farm has 1,960 monocrystalline modules that total 666.4 kilowatts of power supply. The battery bank comprises 2,420 lithium-ion battery cells. The bank is able to store 837 kilowatt hours and output a maximum of 500 kVA. The diesel generators are used when no solar or battery storage is available. ABB supplied the solar inverters that convert the variable direct current output from the solar panels into the alternating current required for electric utilities. ABB's containerized modular plug-and-play microgrid solution includes an ABB Ability Power Store Battery Energy Storage System and the dedicated Microgrid Plus control system. The control system has internet cloud-based capabilities that make remote operation possible. Will you explain how the ABB technology works? ABB used the Microgrid Plus system that basically controls all the, the types of energy and selects which energy must be used at what stage. And what we was installed here is the PV, the solar form, as well as a battery storage system. So between the solar and the batteries, when that's available, it gets used. And when there's no sun and the batteries are empty, then only was diesel generation being used. An ABB Ability Wireless Network further connects the solar plant to the microgrid. This network provides reliable and secure communications, as Fulyun explained. Communication that is used here is a wireless system that communicates between the control system and the solar plant that's on the other side of the island. So there's no cables being laid between the two um, for communication, as well as it used the information goes into the cloud and then it is the control and monitoring of the system is done from Cape Town, that's nine kilometers away and also without putting any cable in the sea for communication. So I think that, that definitely makes it a much nicer, environmentally friendly solution. Fulyun also emphasised the economic benefits of the microgrid installation, particularly in terms of diesel savings. The economic benefit is, is very clear. They use about 600,000 litres of diesel per annum and now the microgrid will work about, say, 75% of the time based on sunlight availability and that. And that means 75% of 600,000 litres equating to 450,000 litres could be saved. Now it's not only the cost of the diesel that's being saved, but also the transport of the diesel to the island, as well as the servicing of the diesel generators. So it's a huge cost saving for them. So the payback period is quick 
and after that it is pure savings for the island. Following the success of the Robben Island microgrid, ABB continues to be involved in the rollout of this technology across the continent. We're definitely working with the various EPCs across Africa to be able to bring these solutions to the various countries. We work, we've already implemented two microgrids in Kenya and are speaking to various governments and utilities to implement it in their countries. To date, ABB has installed more than 40 microgrid installations around the world. These systems serve remote communities, islands, utilities and industrial campuses. And now a World Heritage Site can be added to the list. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.